Now I'm going to talk a little bit about storage spaces and before we begin I'm going to ask that to visit the link in the description below because without having a diagram of how storage spaces work and understanding what a fault domain is, it's kind of difficult to follow through with the RAID analogies that can come through. We're also not going to do too many examples today because, well, frankly, my VM is not big enough. So we're going to go with the basic ones. So first off, if you're working with storage spaces, we're going to show that we don't have one. Uh, we're going to show that we also have a couple of disks. So here in this case, I've got five disks. These will be used for the different types of setup, but we're also going to show what the limitations are. And most importantly, always open the command prompt as admin, or in this case, PowerShell, but you get the idea. If it's not opened as admin, you'll get errors. So first off, I'm going to take the physical disks and I'm going to take two of them. So we're at less than three. So the ID of disk one and two, as you can see, the one and two are there. Mirror, this allows me to create a very simple mirror. So I'm going to go to new storage pool, I'm calling it my pool, um, and we're going to use the physical disks. Now, this is just saying that these disks are together and can be used. So storage pools are not a RAID setup by themselves, but they are the ability to add disks into groups of uh, usable resources. So now that we have a pool, I want to say create a new disk out of that pool. And in this case, I'm going to use all of the available things and I'm going to use a mirror. Now, number of contents here is one. Now, I could have a, what they refer to as a, a three-way mirror, which would be uh, contents number, th sorry, number of columns three, but we would need more disks for that. So we're just going to go with the one. So we have what's referred to as a fault domain redundancy of one. We have two disks, one can fail, the other one will still be fine. Now, we haven't got the disk online at the moment. I'm just showing you that it exists. And consequently, the number of disks has reduced. So instead of five, we now see four. So we have the new one that's created out of the two that previously existed. So that's another thing to keep an, um, an eye on. If you're looking at disk manager, the number of disks will change and you'll not be able to see them whilst they're in pools. So you'll only be able to see the newly created disks. So we have our fault redundancy. That's a basic mirror. So nothing super complicated here, but Keep in mind that if you're doing something as small as a mirror, it doesn't actually make sense to use storage pools because it has a, quite a bit of overhead. So now we're going to clean this up and we're going to go for the next example. So first of all, uh, I will go ahead and delete the storage space so that we can uh, go ahead and basically start the fresh one. So just bring disk online, confirm that it all works, initialized, da da da, and we'll get rid of it. So let's look at the next possible example. What else can we do apart from mirrors? Well, we could also use a value called parity and create RAID 5s and RAID 6s, but we're going to go ahead and create a RAID 10 or an equivalent of a RAID 10. Now we're going to do it simply at the moment because I don't have more disks. I can't build two parity sets. So I'm going to go ahead and create basically a RAID 10 by having two mirrors sewn together into another mirror. So here we have the first two disks in uh, first physical disks and the last two physical disks. So out of the five, number three will still not be included. And we're going to create two storage pools, my pool one, my pool two. And then we're going to create those or put those online as disks, as disk manager would see them. Right. So we're effectively going to have four disks turn into two disks. So that's your first load of mirrors. And then what we can do is we can actually trick the OS at this point. So as you can see, we had five disks, we now have three. So two of those are the amalgamation of the two. If we look in storage uh, spaces, we can see that we also got these disks, which are from the pools. So what we're gonna do is now, we're gonna bring the disk itself online and we're gonna tell it, hey, we would like to create a mirror from this disk to the other new disk. So basically we've been using a mirror on top of a mirror. Now, normally you would not do this. Normally, if you were to have seven or eight drives, you would put them into parity sets. And then on top of that, you would put the mirror. That would give you a better parity and more options. Like you can have hot disks uh, added to, to each um, storage space. So you can say pool one might be five disks and the sixth one is a hot standby. So if you ever need to rebuild the parity, you can do that without needing to um, make major read-write calculations that would 
potentially jeopardize the remaining disks because you have that mean time between failure issue that the more work you make them do for rebuilding the more chances a second or third disk will fail so this is one of those scenarios whereby having something like a hot standby would be more useful so there are different ways of doing this and frankly i would do it differently if i had more disks available to the vm but right now i'm a little running low on storage so i'll just work with the five and again, if you want to look a little bit more into those, uh, I do recommend reading the link in the description below. It will give you a visual diagram of how some of these things work. So technically I've now got my RAID 10 set. So it's not perfect, but it works. And in theory, I've got lots and lots of redundancy there. So I'm going to now get rid of it because I no longer need it. Um, and we're going to move on to the next example. So what else would we like to do? Maybe we want to actually use one of those parity sets that we talked about and create a new, uh, let's say, RAID environment. Let's say maybe RAID 5 this time. But in fairness, I still haven't shown you three-way mirrors. Now, like I said, I won't be able to actually create a three-way mirror because I don't have enough disks. But think of it this way. If you have six disks and you have a three-way mirror, two disks are going to be each set of those mirrors. So you have three mirrors. One mirror will contain your data. The second mirror will contain another copy of your data. And the third mirror will contain a third copy of your data, which theoretically brings you to the point of very, very high availability because the chance of having all those failures at the same time is remote. And you can do this with a single pool. So here we just say increase the column count to uh, three. Now it's telling me that I'm not eligible because I don't have enough disks in this system. And, and that makes perfect sense. That's fine. So it was able to create a storage pool, but it was not able to turn, create a virtual disk out of that storage pool with a triple mirror, which is fine. That, that makes sense. I know that I couldn't do that in the first place, but it would be one of the best options to protect your data. So if you really, 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 and I emphasize really need to have data protection to that level, um, use a triple mirror. That's, that's the pretty much the best you can get in terms of having data redundancy. Downside, it is going to cost you a lot of storage because you're effectively triplicating the, the storage scenario. But, you know, we're not looking at storage spaces to save space. We're looking at storage spaces to keep systems available. So, as previously mentioned, let's have a look at parity. So parity, you can create RAID sets. So the most common one and most people are familiar with is RAID 5. So if we go ahead and create a RAID 5 set, we're going to say, let's use all five of our disks. We're going to create a new storage pool. And out of that storage pool, we're going to put a resilience level of 2. So technically, this is RAID 6. Because we're saying two drives out of the set are going to be just for parity. So we have three disks used for data and two disks used for parity. So in theory, we could lose two disks and we would still have a working chunk of data. So that's a RAID 6. Um, and, and basically all I need to do is change the number of disks relative to the um, RAID level I want. So here we had two, meaning it's RAID 6. If I just said one, that would be RAID 5. And equally, you think about the number of disks that you have in the storage pool. For example, let's say that I've got seven disks and then I've got two for parity. That means that I've got five disks available for actual data storage. But if I have, let's say, a pool of 20 disks and I have two for parity, then the number or potential of failures is getting kind of high because you only need two disks to fail out of 20 for it to become a statistical probability. So here we say we get the virtual disk and we can see that it's parity and that the fault domain redundancy here is two. So a bit like um, RAID analogies where RAID 6 gives you two physical disks uh, redundancy and as the more you add, you should add a few more redundant disks. It's kind of a similar thing with fault domains. It's not an accurate analogy, but it is an analogy. The reason it's not accurate is because these change in a server environment. We have multiple servers, multiple um, storages and etc. etc. But anyway, let's get on to another example. Uh, let's do RAID 5 with a hot pluggable spare. So what we're doing is create a storage pool with the first four drives. 
and then what we're going to do is put that disk online same as we did it initially um, before but we're then going to take the fifth disk and we're going to add the fifth disk as you can see add physical disk to the storage pool but using the words hot spare so what this means and this is pretends again depending on your experience as to whether you understand what hot spare means but let's do the, the basic analogy if you have a, a raid 5 you have one disk for parity and you're rebuilding the information that once that one disk is lost now the biggest chance for you to lose data at that point is that if another drive fails so you want to reduce the risk that the other drives are going to be heavily burdened but you also want to have a drive quickly available and you want to make sure that drive is not totally burned out from being used all the time like the others so hot spare effectively is a disk that is just available that has not had data written to it so this hot spare here we can see is now here so in the eventuality that I need to add a disk because one of them fails I have a hot spare standing by so I can rebuild my array knowing that I've got a reasonably safe chance that that disk is not going to fail because it's not been used or burnt up like the others so that's basically a hot spare now that's quite common that you would see something like that with a raid 5 um, particularly with some of the larger raid 6s as well so let's say again you had 10 disks two for parity and you might have one hot spare just in case that way if one disk fails uh, the chances of a second one failing is probably in the same mean time between failure but you've got one immediately available that you can use now this probably hasn't explained everything about storage spaces but hopefully it's given you a bit of an insight as to how storage spaces work